Could you live in a serpent's nest? How about in a Nautilus? Welcome to the wildly imaginative architectural world of Javier Senosian. It's a world of organic architecture, harmony between humans and the natural environment. The idea has been the driving force of Senosian's career. He's written books about it, he teaches it at university, and he has an amazing portfolio of work to show it off. And that is what we're about to look at. Organic architecture originates with none other than Frank Lloyd Wright, who wanted buildings to naturally be a part of their environment. Great examples of this are his own homes, Taliesin in Wisconsin and Taliesin West in Arizona. And then of course, his famous falling water. So, Frank Lloyd Wright, a noted influence on Javier Sinocian. Another we must bring up, Antoni Gaudi. The famous Catalan architect who loved color, curves, and natural forms. A couple epic examples. Here's the ceiling of the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona, supported by tree-like pillars. And here's his famous Park Well. Note the colorful mosaics. These are just a couple things to keep in mind as we dive into Snocian's work, starting with the Mexican whale. This house emerges from the ground like a whale would from the sea. The glazed tiles are meant to evoke water glistening. The flowing shape was created by blowing up a pneumatic structure, spraying it with a layer of polyurethane, and then after that, covering it in cement. The interior is equally mind-blowing. Next up is a selection of partially buried homes that rivals those of Hobbiton. And actually, they were built before the famous Lord of the Rings set. To me, these homes have a science fiction look to them but at the same time feel prehistoric, like something from the Stone Age. Here is one of my favorite pics of the complex, with a puckering fish entrance. Once inside, you still feel like you're outside, thanks to these gardens under skylights. Next is Nautilus. Climb up the steps to the house, and you're greeted by this enormous stained glass wall. Step in and you've entered a curvaceous kaleidoscope. You're immediately greeted by a garden and a welcoming conversation pit. The house continues to spiral up. You're meant to feel protected like you're in, well, a shell, one of nature's oldest dwellings. The Nautilus is a hard act to follow, but we've got to end on something big. So here is Quetzalcoatl's nest. This is a 10-unit apartment complex outside Mexico City. It was built in 2007. Here's how the story goes. Snocian was to build on this site. The land was very irregular and had caves. Staying true to organic architecture, he strived to keep the grounds as is as possible. They had to get rid of some of the caves due to safety reasons, but the most stable cave they kept and the mouth of it reminded him of a snake. And then he just ran with that. Quetzalcoatl, by the way, is an ancient Mesoamerican god. It's a serpent with feathers. Probably the most exciting thing about these apartments, you can rent them on Airbnb. I think we can all agree that Javier Sinocian's homes are stunning. But I often ask myself, could I live in a home so strange? And then I think, well, why are they strange? These are natural shapes carefully designed to fit their surroundings. They're the opposite of strange, but they're certainly different. And humans usually don't like different. We're content building our homes as just variations of cubes and rectangles. Now, I know there's good reason for that, and I love myself a blocky modern home. But it's homes like Sinocien's that really challenge me. They get my imagination going. Get me thinking about what a house could be like without any rules. And it's these thoughts that inspire me to create a more beautiful home.